All right. Hello and welcome everyone to Scadio Live Ops. Today's session is going to focus on patrol led drone as first responder capabilities. I am Lee McMillan, Director of Product Marketing for Scadio, and I'm going to be your host for today. We want to make this webinar as conversational as possible, so please drop your questions in the Q&A. We'll do our best to answer some on the fly. If not, we're going to save some time at the end to make sure we address everyone's questions. Now, I'm going to quickly introduce our panel and go through a couple of slides to set up um, this, and then we're going to the session. Then we're going to hand that off to the folks in the field to to show you what it looks like live. Joining me today is Fritz Reber, head of our public safety integration at Skydio. He comes to us from Chula Vista PD, where he set up the Drone as First Responder program. Next up, we have Deepu John and Brian King. They're our solution engineers who will be doing most of our flying today, either on site or remotely. And let's see, Deepu comes to us from NYPD, where he set up their UAS program. And Brian King started his career out in the US um, Army and has been helping public safety agencies with UAS programs for the last seven years. Rounding on our group today, we have Jason LaFond, our customer success manager. He's out in the field helping customers do this every day and going to hopefully share some cool stories with us. Jason, too, comes from NYPD, where he was instrumental in launching their BWC program. Next up, Kendall. All right. So just the situation. We're doing patrol-led drone as first responders. And this is a, a situation that we're doing every day with our customers. They're putting drones in and deploying them with officers. Then they're launching them in the field, either via controller or just setting it on the ground and having the remote pilot initiate and fly the entire mission. This provides patrol overwatch for any situation. Uh, for any type of call, and it's scalable to any type of agency. Next, please. All right, so when Skydio comes in, we're, we're a one-stop shop. We're not going to just hand you some hardware and say, go do it. We want to make sure we're taking care of you from the inception of your program, whether that's documentation, regulatory support, making sure you're set up with the right hardware, software packages to fly the operations you want to fly. And then lastly, we're going to make sure you have the right training to get value and um, fly your successful missions from day one. Today, we're going to feature the Skydio X10. This is our newest drone. It's um, purpose built for um, cases just like this. We've got easy use with rapid deployment. So what I want you all to pay attention to when we're flying is this drone can get off the ground or from zero power to off the ground in 40 seconds. We're going to talk about our now we're going to show you our autonomy and obstacle avoidance. We can fly in some locations where other drones can't possibly fly. And then finally, the sensor packages. We have some great telephoto capabilities and thermal, pack, um, thermal sensors that we're going to show off today. Unfortunately, we're flying during the daytime, so we can't show off some of the night flight capabilities. Next up is our remote flight deck. We're going to be flying this drone over a 5G connection um, with a remote pilot. And the beauty about this is the remote pilot can fly the entire mission or do a handoff, which we'll, we'll show today. Next up. And then I want to talk about just how we're flying today. We are helping agencies enabling, enabling them to fly this by working with the right regulatory um, bodies, particularly the FAA, to make sure they have a certificate of author, authorization or co in place to fly these type of missions. Um, where today it's going to be a visual observer on the ground remote pilot flying beyond visual line of sight. And uh, Skydio is actually operating under our Part 107 waiver, which allows us to fly nationwide. Um, the one caveat we have is we have to file some no TAMs um, as well to make sure we're flying safely and correctly. And then speaking of where we're going to fly, um, we're going to have Brian that's on the ground in Florida. He's going to be launching it. And then Deepu is going to be flying from his uh, remote Operations Center, aka his home office, up in New York City. Uh, and with that, I want to hand it off to Fritz to kind of lay the groundwork and we'll get flying. Yeah, thanks, Lee. I'm super excited about this uh, this demo. Um, I think the video and just watching it's going to speak for itself mostly. So you'll get all of us basically chiming in with. Just, you know, why this capability is important, why Skydio is unique in being able to do this. Um, you know, obviously the patrol led deployment where we're just, you know, people are giving drones to people in patrol and they're flying by hand. Everyone that kind of understands that use case. And then DFR, uh, where you're flying uh, from a 
a preposition, trying to get ahead of ground units. People are generally getting that. And then this patrol led DFR in that world uh, where you're flying remotely, drones that are deployed in the field really opens up a world of use cases. Um, and we're, we have our own ideas, obviously, and we're interested in hearing from everyone else who uh, can vision this happening in their agency, how they use it and how they uh, use it to resolve incidents and then you know, serve their community. So uh, you, like uh, Lee said, uh, Brian King, he'll be our first responder out in the field. Uh, you know, the scenario might be he's alone. He'd like to have cover, but maybe the cover's 20 minutes out. Um, Deepu John sitting back at HQ or a real-time crime center or a jock uh, miles away, ready to assist by jumping in a drone. Um, and so with that lead up, we'll just start the mechanics of what it looks like. All right. Thanks, Fritz. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us. And what you're looking at right here is a live screen of uh, of the video feed from the drone that uh, that our first responding officer has uh, powered on. He's, he's at a felony car stop. He's at a remote location, and he wants an extra set of eyes over his shoulder just in case uh, something bad happens. So uh, he's powered on the drone. I've uh, done my safety checks and my settings and everything and ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to communicate with Brian, my VO there. Brian, am I clear to launch as far as airspace? All right. Hearing that, we are good to go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the launch button here. And uh, I'm going to be using a game controller to, to fly the drone. You can pretty much use any game controller that's available from Best Buy or anything. Connect that to your laptop and you can uh, fly the drone using that. Um, and for the remainder of this, I'm going to have my video off but my audio on. So the drone is up in the air. I have positive control of the aircraft. Uh, put my gimbal down. So just kind of going with the scenario that this is a felony car stop and, and Brian wants to keep eyes on this vehicle as he's, uh, as he's uh, going to be uh, interacting with the subject. So I'm just gonna bring the drone up a little bit, tilt the camera down. And we could see Brian right there. So just to show you that Brian isn't actually flying the drone, his hands are free. That's the key aspect of this, right? You're all by yourself. You, you can't launch a drone and fly it by hand. You'll be busy staring at the screen. Uh, who's covering you? Uh, so drones really aren't uh, deployed until you have three or four people on scene and you can spare one or two people. Here, he's all by himself. And yet, uh, because the agency has positioned Deepu as a remote pilot ready to assist maybe dozens of officers out there at a moment's notice, he's uh, instantly got a cover unit that can obviously see a great deal, cover a lot more ground. Um, you know, obviously we hope other units would get there and cover Brian, but while he's alone, he's not. Um, just he's not this is all 5G. Well, while he's flying here, I just want to give a quick environmental update. Um, on the ground here, I've got anywhere between 10 to 12 mile per hour wind. So, uh, just keep that in mind as he's elevated uh, that he, he's going to see much higher winds. Um, you'll see with the video quality here uh, that the X10 can handle them uh, very well. Other use case, it doesn't have to be a traffic stop. I mean, it's just, it's endless, right? Maybe maybe Brian's first unit on scene on a missing child. Uh, you know, the first duty is to talk to mom and search the house, um, but they're worried about how far this kid could wander. There's a lot of wander water around. So he goes to the trunk, just pulls out the drone that's in a, in a go kit. So it's already spread out, ready to go, puts it on the ground, tells Deepu to jump in it. And meanwhile, Deepu can fly around, um, look for that child, use thermal to see the water's edges, um, collect some license plates in the area, just in case there's a, you know, a missing child turns into a crime and just, you know, cover 10 X more gr ground than someone on foot with a, with basically a 2d level view of the world. Yeah, and just to add to that, this is truly a force multiplier. Um, you know, most law enforcement agencies in this country are struggling to hire and retain police officers for the ability to launch this technology, provide overwatch at many different different types of call for service, uh, where that that person who launches at the officer in the field then is the visual observer and reduces the cognitive load of them being the pilot. Uh, this is really uh, impactful for agencies. And uh, those agencies that want to do DFR, this really enables that um, for several reasons. One is you could obviously do DFR with this capability, right? You could have a couple of people sit at a, a, a 
a location, maybe a special event and, and fly remotely. And all they have to do is worry about changing the battery and essentially replicate what a dock does. Um, and, uh, but you, you can also do DFR type, uh, situations in the field. How often does a, a police officer hear of a call, uh, maybe a mental health issue, the person's got a knife, uh, they stage, they develop a game plan. Maybe they're waiting for less lethal. Um, you can launch that drone and have the drone uh, go ahead of you and arrive first, essentially. So get DFR level, level capability with this. Um, and then everyone can jump in their car and drive over to the scene. A drone can follow them and then be landed over at the uh, location of the incident. So, and, and keep in mind, DFR as it is now for agencies, uh, with any other type of drone, they have to stay above the tree line. Um, and they're limited by the range of the controller. Uh, here, you have a drone that doesn't hit anything, can fly comfortably amongst the trees, and it's all 5G connected. So where Deepu is and where Brian King is, is totally irrelevant. So if you had a huge county with no hope of having DFR from fixed positions covering your entire county, you can have DFR level capability immediately. One of the things I want to point out for, for the pilot is the level of comfort that you get from uh, knowing that you have that uh, full 360 degree obstacle avoidance uh, available to you. So even though I'm flying remotely and my, uh, you know, it's kind of like looking through, uh, looking through a pipe, I don't have situational awareness around, uh, around me to the left and right. Um, I know that that obstacle avoidance is working for me continuously so I can get up close to objects um, if I uh, if I'm doing a suspect search and I need to get below the canopy of a tree uh, and and look up, uh, I can safely do that, knowing that the obstacle avoidance is going to kind of keep keep me and the drone safe. So I'll kind of demonstrate that as we get uh, by these palm trees here. Yeah, you can fly after that truck and like you're covering it on the T-stop or something. Yeah. Yeah, not only is the remote pilot in this live stream, but you know, with, with Skydio Cloud and the X10, you have the ability to live stream this video to boots on the ground decision makers and commanders as they're responding to this incident. So let's say your SWAT team is en route, you can share the live stream with those commanders and they can start to build out the attack plan while they're still driving to the incident. Really important. Yeah, that's a good point on the example we're using of missing child. So um, Brian's inside talking to mom. Uh, Deepu's flying around, sees a couple of possibles, zooms in on them, and then Brian shows with his phone, hey, is this your kid? And Oh, yeah, we found him playing over in the dugout there nearby or something. Yep, that live stream link could be shared to a mobile phone, a tablet, where anyone in the field can open that live stream link and view in real time the feed directly coming right from the drone. Oh, yeah. We actually have the ability to assign alerts to different groups within agencies or organizations. So if a certain group uh, had a had a mission going on, they would all get emails. Um, they would get emails to be to see that the live stream is happening. Um, this is my kid's sword that he likes to play with. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, other, the, one, the other thing I want to touch on was Deepu uh, is right now he's flying with a game controller, Xbox controller. Um, you also have the ability to use the keyboard, uh, WASD, shift, spacebar, uh, mouse controls. So there's definitely a, a, a variety of options to, to to use for piloting. So if you have somebody that likes to use a game controller uh, or somebody that has no idea how to use a game controller, um, you have you have some uh, some options there for piloting. So the ability to be able to uh, fly up high and be able to zoom in real close really uh, enhances uh, the ability to cover large areas and be able to zoom in and look at points of interest. So. Just want to kind of demonstrate that zoom capability here so you know just kind of going with that same idea of looking for a missing child uh you know if you see a point of interest you can you know with with the 128x zoom on the the skydio x10 you could actually really uh get very close to um to the subject that you're looking at and then be able to zoom out and get that wide area view to get a better idea of the area you, you need to cover Yeah, I don't know if there's any here in a minute. He's going to zoom to the, he's going to he's going to zoom to the left, and you know maybe sometimes you don't need you, you you're, you're really far away, and you just need to get situational awareness. You just need to understand hey how many people are there, what's going on, so on and so forth. And with the capability here, you're going to see he's going to zoom in 
to just about two miles away, straight distance uh, to a pier. And you're going to see, hey, there's there's X amount of people there. You know, you may not know what they're doing or what they have, but you're able to, before the officers get to the scene, hey, you have 15 people out there that are that are in that area. So, you, you know, they can prepare themselves for that type of situation. And again, this is about two miles straight distance away. Right. And if this was a low light, you could leverage a the thermal camera um, to, to see those people out on the pier. It really is a paradigm shift because traditionally people think of drones as only in large incidents, right? You only get this value when it's an important incident. And that's because there's multiple people and lots of resources. But now you can have it on every incident, like a one person T stop where the person, uh, you know, maybe has a warrant and you're nervous that they're going to run or something. So you get this level of capability on the smallest, most insignificant incidents. And you could have multiple streams coming into a real-time crime center. So command staff chief could walk into RTCC, see several things going on in his city. One side of the city is a traffic stop. The other is a, a you know missing child. Another one's a fatal accident um, or any kind of car accident. So having this level of, of situational awareness that the drone provides on your lowest level incidents. Um, and we know those are the ones that blow up and become the big ones because uh, there just wasn't enough attention or resources early on. It's just really democratizing something that is, you know, game changing on, on any incident. And, and it's a collection of evidence repository for what happened, increases accountability for officers on scene. You get command, you know, on, on a, uh, an awareness of how your officers are working in the field. Hey, Fred, since you just mentioned um, evidence collection, we actually had a question come in here that was asking, um, do we have the ability to record audio while the drone flies asking for and how they collect? Because I know we collect all the video and any images you take. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. I can cover it. Um, we actually yeah. don't uh, collect the audio. Um, we will be having a speaker and mic attachment that you could put on this drone. So over time, what will happen um, if it's too loud to collect a microphone when you're flying, but what that feature will have is a purge feature. So if you were doing a search and rescue operation, the drone could land and then you could have two-way comms and it would record that. So that one, that was from the drone itself, but uh, there's also maybe a need to collect the conversation at the pilot level too, from the, from any controller, or maybe even Deepu's conversation. So uh, those are yet to be explored, I think. Yeah, and a lot of what I think the use cases and are as most officers are, you know, wearing body worn these days. So you can collect yeah, all your true. audio on site there and it would all be tied together. We do have integration points with Axon Evidence. So that would all come in and create a kind of seamless timeline of the event. That's a good point. You got to wear, wear a body cam in the in the flight room now, Deepu. <laughs> and then, One of the other things I want to point out, uh, you know, just kind of going with that same search theme is the, the improved thermal camera on the Skydio X10. Uh, which has a new 640 by 512 FLIR Boson Plus thermal camera. And it is the best thermal camera available for, on a drone this size. Uh, what you're going to notice is how uh, the, the level of detail that you can get from um, I'm at 150 feet, 145 feet in the air. And uh, you can clearly see uh, the subject moving around over there. Um, and there's not a lot of difference in temperature, I'm sure, um, from, from the ground to ambient temperature. I'm sorry, from ambient temperature to uh, body temperature. So uh, even with that uh, low difference in temperature, uh, the, the camera can pick up uh, body heat and, uh, you know, the images of people very quickly and very fast. And then Deepu, we got a question that's kind of related, not quite related to this, but while you're flying here, what's the response time you're seeing between the controls and the drone reacting and kind of the round trip ping for that? So, yeah, it's a great question. Um, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to. There is just like a, a, a slight little lag in, in the controls from when you input to, to when the drone actually responds, uh, but nothing that's uh, in any way that's kind of preventing me from flying safely here. Um, I can, I know that when I uh, do an input, there's maybe a half a millisecond of, of lat latency, which uh, is something that you kind of train on and get used to. Uh, but here we got some folks getting, uh, getting ready to play some soccer. So it's a good way to show off the, uh, the thermal camera here. And then we also have this split screen. So on the right of the screen, you can see the, the map view of where the drone is located and also the field of view of what it's looking at. So uh, if you're trying to, 
uh, guide ground assets into a specific location, you can kind of guide them in based on that, um, based on where the drone is looking. Yeah, Dupu, there's also a question here. Does the drone software record the flight path? And the answer is yes. So um, the telemetry data from the drone flight will sync to Scotty Cloud post flight, which will breadcrumb trail the exact path of the drone. And that could be part of uh, your evidence uh, presentation uh, in the court proceeding. That's a very good point. And then a um, couple other things to mention about the aircraft itself. Um, it is very quiet. Uh, the drone is designed to be uh, incredibly quiet. So if you are trying to do any kind of law enforcement work, like uh, court-ordered search warrants, court-ordered surveillance, things like that, um, at about 150 feet up and 150 feet away in urban uh, sound environments, the drone is going to be pretty much inaudible. You're not going to be able to hear, um, which which can be very beneficial when you're trying to do um, any kind of court-ordered uh, reconnaissance work. Great. And we had another uh, question come in around how we're flying under a Part 107 waiver um, and why is it required. We are flying, as I kind of mentioned to, to tee this one up, we're flying, Skydio has a nationwide Part 107 waiver that allows us to have a VO on the ground and operate in an area when we file a NOTAM. So we're following those to the T here. Most of our agencies um, that we're helping get approved are flying under COAs, which allows them a little more freedom of operation. Still the VO is required, but the pilot can be remote from an op center. Um, they're flying remote. Jason, any other things you're seeing out in the field there? Nope. All right, covered that one. So Lee, I know we spoke before about uh, evidence and, and acts on um, evidence.com. So, you know, most agencies have a use policy where the entire recording or the flight must be video recorded. And, you know, agencies really must consider early on in development of their program, how they will manage digital evidence. Um, if they don't work through that early, it becomes not scalable. One of our key integrations is with evidence.com. So, Let's say this was a uh, real call for service flight and uh, the pilot recorded as they should according to their use policy. After the drone lands um, and the drone is connected to power, that video evidence can sync through Skydio Cloud right into evidence.com where it can be housed right along with body camera video or in-car camera video or other video that's in uh, evidence.com digital evidence management system. And what that does is really create a end-to-end uh, -end um chain of custody through the evidence audit trail and evidence.com re removing the human interaction in that chain of custody which um which provides a really solid um chain of custody and um no doubt of any um you know changes made that video authenticity all right i think our pilots are going to start bringing us in here because we know we got about three minutes left of this demo and we're going to try to keep answering questions on the fly here while we're doing that um, let's see here. I do have a question that's kind of timely is about endurance. Our drone here is rated for, I believe, 40 minutes of flight time. And then the second part is, uh, charge time. Uh, Deepu, do you know, what is it? What's our state of charge time there? Sure. Yeah. The charge time for the battery, um, is about, uh, 38 minutes when from 20% charge to 90% charge. So usually that last 10% and uh, the bottom 20% of them uh, would take the most time, uh, but about an hour uh, with uh, the supplied 230 watt charger uh, for from, from fully depleted battery to fully charged. But most of the time on the use cases, uh, you're gonna be charging when the battery is down to about 20%. So it's about 38 minutes to get it yeah. back up to 90%. And then kind of related to that, uh, I know you've flown a bunch of these. Have you seen any battery differences in flying over 5G versus the controller? That's a great question. No, so it, it really doesn't, um, there's no noticeable difference in flight time when you're flying over 5G versus controller. Um, and uh, Brian, I'm gonna hand control over back to you. So if you wanna take over and land, it's your controls. Okay. Yep, taking control. Your controls. So, Got it. Thank you. So obviously the Brian is commandeering it and you can fly through 5G without hand controller as well. So uh, not only could Brian do that, but another deputy or officer miles away could pull over, pull out their controller and commandeer this drone and fly it. So oh, and Brian, 
I'm sorry, Fritz. Brian, while you're there, there was a request to show a license plate, which I uh, wasn't able to do. So if you could just do that real quick. There you go. And, and taking off is, is probably easier to manage operationally than landing. Um, I'm sure we can all imagine scenarios where, you know, the officer isn't available to take control of the drone. Maybe they've uh, jumped in their cars and raced off after a murder suspect or they're inside of a house, you know, and that battery time is, is due um, and you need to land and you have no one to play catch. Uh, so operational protocols will be in place where you could land this thing safely on a on a rooftop somewhere and just have it perch and waiting for someone to be able to come come and get it or if you did have a dfr operation with uh, launch sites nearby you could fly home that way if you had dfr from pre-position locations this would be a good way to have sustained overwatch and do battery swaps or actually drone swaps right on scene so the first drone flies out it's overhead gathering intel uh, when it's time to return to home uh, you let the officer on scene know to replace it with the, the drone that's in their trunk. Um, they reach out, set it down, and then you jump in that one. And now you've got sustained overwatch and you can swap between multiple drones. In an ideal world, every one of these officers would have one of these in their trunk. And uh, you could have a lot of, uh, you know, sustained overwatch operations pretty simply. All right, just a little call out for time here. I know we're at about our 30 minutes, but we're going to stick around for at least another five minutes here while he's bringing it in and address a bunch of questions that have been flying in as well. Um, just while we're getting into that position, um, let's see here. Oh, I had a question come in and ask if this is available on the X2. Um, while the X2 can fly from a dock and have remote based operations, it does not, it's not enabled uh, with cellular today. All right, and as we can see here, I'm going to pause for questions while Brian brings it in for home. Going to get that hand catch today. We'll show an off in the field is always fun. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a couple of technical questions coming here. I got one on weather rating. Uh, anyone want to take that one for the drone? Sure. Yeah, the Skydio X10 is uh, IP55 rated, so it is rated to fly in uh, light to moderate rain. Um, so, and then um, it can handle temperatures from uh, minus four to 113 degrees. Thank you very much. And then let's see here. Here's another good one to follow up for that. Does our drone have active tracking that can? Uh, in this case, they were looking for ATVs. And yeah. The that's a great question. So because of the autonomy and the AI that's built into the drone, there is some pretty advanced uh, tracking capabilities that you can do. So you can do uh, tracking on uh, using the electro optical camera, using the, the RGB camera. And we also have tracking enabled on the thermal camera. So if you are doing any kind of um, work uh, during the night and you're trying to do any kind of surveillance, you can do that um, and use the, the thermal camera to actively track the subject, um, pers persons and vehicles. All right, and now while you're on, that's great. And now while you're on the thermal cam camera, we had some folks um, chime in and ask if it was just white hot only, or do we have different heat views? Great question. So a little bit more about the thermal camera. It is a uh, 640 by 512 radiometric FLIR boson plus camera. Um, it has uh, right out of the box, you have pallets for black hot, white hot, uh, iron bow and rainbow. And that radiometric is, uh, is really useful I mean, I've, I've heard of people using it uh, for use cases like looking for uh, hidden grave sites and things like that. Um, just there, there's some incredible research being done um, just using the thermal camera to, you know, to aid in investigations. Great. Well, let's see here. I'm trying to keep these here. Oh, uh, just kind of related or somewhat related. We had a lot of battery questions. Uh, I'll just give you two right here. One is like, what's the lifespan of the battery? And then the second one is in flight. What's the return uh, behavior when a battery is um, getting low? So I'll, I'll answer the second question first. Um, so we leave a lot of those decisions to the pilot. So um, uh, as a pilot, you can have the drone uh, remind you when you are at low battery. So when you're at, uh, we call bingo fuel, just enough battery to get back to base. Um, the drone will let you know you're at low battery and you can ignore that and decide to stay on target and stay flying. 
Um, and when you're at two minutes, uh, at when you have two minutes of flight time left, the, the drone will again remind you that you have two minutes of flight time left. At that point, you can again ignore that and the countdown will start. And at the end of those two minutes, the drone will start to descend. And then um, you, you have uh, the ability to control the drone left and right to uh, land it in a safe place, but the drone is going to auto land at that point. Um, and what was that first question? Um, I think it was the lifespan of the battery. Oh, the charge, charge yeah. cycle. So, yep, the batteries are, char uh, are rated for 200 charge cycles. All right, I got about three more hot questions that are coming in. And by the way, there's probably more questions than we can ask here today. So. Um, we'll get back to you if we can't address them all. The one I have here is your platform able to integrate with Axon Respond or Fusis? Yeah, so we currently do. So we can live stream video to Axon Respond. So if agencies are currently using that with body camera or fleet video, we can actually live stream while the drone is in flight to those platforms. In addition to Axon Respond, I see the question is also Fusis specifically. We offer a program called Ax, um, Skydio Extend which we have a full suite of API extensions and allows our system to integrate with other platforms that agencies are using. So we can push our live stream to many platforms. Axon Respond is live today. All right. And then I got another question here that I'll take. It says, are you developing a doc for X10? Uh, yes, we announced that at our um, user conference at the end of last year. So that is in development. Um, we already have some agencies, as I mentioned earlier, using that X2 today with our current generation of docs to do some tests for um, DFR programs. Those are going very well, and we're just really excited and going to be able to bridge the gap and bring you a, a new doc with the X10 later later this year. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? That looks good. I want to get one more. Oh, here's one good one, just flight operations wise. In case of emergency, how do you recover the dock if they have to make a landing? Like say they want to stay on station too long and then just be land in the field. How do you find it? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, if you do uh, have to land the drone uh, on station, uh, the last known location of the drone will be displayed on the map. So the control will have the last known GPS location. So you just go out to that location, there'll be the, uh, the good starting point to look for the drone. All right, um, let's see here. Actually, I do have time for a couple more questions. I was just informed, I thought it was 30 minutes and we actually have a few more, so I'm not taking up everyone's time after all. Uh, let's see here, um, next up, it says, we got the black and white hot, oh, batteries, are they hot, hot swappable? So the batteries are not hot swappable. So the Skydio X10 only has one flight battery, so it's not hot swappable. Um, and the way we kind of solve for that is the um, the reboot time. So when you take the battery out and you pop a new battery and power the drone on, you're you're able to get back in the air in about 30 to 40 seconds. So um, you know if if you want to have a hot swappable battery, you got to have dual batteries, which will increase the size of the aircraft. And the Skydio X10 is a very uh, very small form factor for the for its capabilities. All right, great. And then I got, I'm going to probably wrap it up here because our question flow is slowing down. What are the options for downloading your data? Is it USB, wireless? I'm going to go through those. Jason, you want to take that? Sure. Yeah, both of those and more. So in the more manual process, um, a pilot could pull the SD card and, and offload the digital evidence and store them in whatever system they use. In a more automated way, you can use uh, MediaSync, which is a product we offer when the pilot gets back to their commands or even from the field if they have a reliable network source like a hotspot you can connect the drone to power it will connect that network network source and upload that digital evidence right from the field right to skydio cloud where it can house it and then as i mentioned before if it was integrated uh the agency had evidence.com and skydio cloud was integrated with that that media would automatically push over to evidence.com where it would be housed as their digital evidence management system where they could empower all of the DEMS feature that evidence.com has, including evidence audit trail, retention in categories, and also easily sharing that to prosecution stakeholders, right? So agencies capture all this digital evidence, and now what do they do with it? Where do they store it and how they share it? Um, there is a solution for that. Don't reinvent the wheel. Great. I do have one more here that came in. It says, 
The county has limited coverage for T-Mobile today, about 50%. What's the plan for Verizon uh, or for FirstNet type of things? And then can it work with Starlink? Uh, there's a lot in that question. You want to take it or I can take some pieces of that as well. Well, you want to take the first crack and then I'll fill it in? Yeah, sure. So in terms of our cellular coverage, AT&T, or I'm sorry, T-Mobile is our partner for this release. We are working with Verizon and AT&T and hope to roll those out in the future. But it's not as simple as a cell phone. We've actually built a new technology. So we really needed a partner that would work with us and um, help us capture the complexities of um, flying a drone over the cellular, which has not been done to date. It has different angles in terms of you can be flying three, 400 feet up in the air and um, some streaming capabilities. So, yep, we'll be working on it. But T Mobile is our partner out the gate here. And Deepu, you want to take the rest? Yeah, I actually just want to talk about that capability in general. I mean, when when we were starting the drone program over at the NYPD, the, the idea of flying over LTE was, you know, it wasn't even possible at that time. You know, anytime you're operating in an area with congested RF environments, you know, the ideal way to would be to operate over LTE. So now seeing the Scadio actually bringing that out and be, being able to enable that for agencies is, is really a game changer, especially in, you know, one one of the things is flying remotely and using uh, using the drone as a DFR. And then the other part of it is actually flying in these RF congested environments where sometimes LTE is a better option. Great. And then I'm kind of somewhat related, we have a question here. It says, what type of hardware software needed for the remote pilot? Can the drone be operated from a laptop? I think you pretty much showed that one off today, Deepu. Yeah. But so yeah, I mean, if you want to look, at, I, I basically have a laptop and I have a gamepad controller connected to my laptop, and that's really essentially all you uh, all you need. Um, you know, for when you're flying remotely, you need to um, en enable remote ID, so the pilot's location is broadcasted through the Skydio app. So your location is broadcast in real time as well. Um, to confuse the folks over at Vert FAA. FAA. Uh, to show them that I'm flying from New York. Um, but yeah, uh, so all the regulatory stuff has been handled as well. Great. And then it says, um, for remote pilots, are you looking at any AR, VR capabilities for the UX? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question one more time? I think for the remote pilot, they're looking to see if we're going to add any um, AR, VR capabilities to the UX. Yeah, we're uh, anytime we're we're going out in the field and talking to customers, we're taking feedback from them. And there's some great um, updates that are coming to Remote Flight Deck. Um, I don't want to put any spoilers out there, but um, a lot of uh, a lot of user interface updates are coming um, to to be able to help the remote pilot with situational awareness for for being being able to plan the missions better and to be able to execute the missions better and coordinate with uh, ground units. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap us today, Kendall. You just want to switch back. Just kind of message I leave you with is we're already working with a ton of public safety agencies. Uh, we're running these type of operations today, and we'd love to uh, hear from you after this event and see if we can't uh, help get your patrol-led DFR program off the ground too. Um, Steam panel here, thank you for putting on the demo today, and audience, thank you for your great 